You are listening to the Dare to Love podcast with your hosts, Sonica Tinker and Christian Peterson, founders of LoveWorks. Hi, and welcome back to the podcast. This is Christian talking. I'm glad to be with you today. You might have noticed that uh, in the last few weeks, I published a few episodes about how men use or lose their power in relationship. Uh, that was partly in preparation for my men's retreat, Power and Heart, and partly because that is just something that is near and dear to my heart and that I have made a life's work out of. I am seriously interested in that, and I'm seriously interested in supporting myself and other men to find a good way to use our power. In the, those previous episodes, I talked about and given advice for what to do about this whole thing about using or losing power in relationships. So if you're interested in those episodes, go check those out as well here on the podcast. Now, in one of those episodes, I opened up with the question to men. Do you feel you have power in your relationship? Do you feel you get to be a powerful man? And if you're, if you, the listener, if you're the partner of a man, I would add a question to you. Do you think that your man feels he has power in your relationship? Do you think that he gets to feel like a powerful man in your relationship? In this episode, I want to just add a little more to that conversation. I've had some fun and interesting and deep conversations with men uh, around my men's retreat. So I want to add a little more to this conversation. Now, when we talk about being powerful or feeling powerful, what does that mean? Well, there are a lot of ways we could define that, and there's a lot more depth we can do to that. As a matter of fact, I could probably do a whole podcast episode on just the definition of that. But I have like a short working definition, which is the ability to confidently and openly communicate what you want and need, and the ability to remain emotionally present with what is happening around you that is in yourself or with the people you interact with. Now, in a relationship, that means you feel safe and confident to share what's really on your mind. It means you feel okay to be open about what you want and what you need. It means you can stay present in the face of your own or others' emotions and communications. And it means you can be honest that you can say what, you know, you can say yes when you mean yes, but you can also say no when you mean no and you feel safe to do so. And you have the confidence to deal with what shows up no matter what. When men don't feel powerful in themselves, they tend to do one of two things. And I'll, I'll tell you in a moment what that is. But I'll also say um, I'm just going to put it in a pretty uh, sort of in a maybe a little crass manner. And this came actually from conversations I've just had with men where men are a little confused about sometimes and their partners sometimes are confused about, well, I don't really know when when I'm really stepping into my power or when I'm not. And how, how do I even tell? And I, out of one conversation came this. I said, well, basically, you know, you you end up either, if you go too far to one side, you end up being a doormat. And if you go too far to the other side, you end up being a dick. Nobody wants to be a dick and nobody wants to be a doormat. And yeah, like I said, I know that might be a bit crass, but I think it's useful because everyone can immediately understand what that means. You know, no man is trying to act like a dick. All right. No. And certainly no one wants to be a doormat and no one wants their partner to act like a dick. And no one wants their partner to act like a doormat. There is a whole host of undesirable side effects of this kind of behavior. You know, it's like this spectrum that has being a dick on one end and being a do doormat on the other end. And it comes with all kinds of problems, which is why it's really important to figure out a different way uh, to deal with it, a different way to be, and why it's really important for you as a man to recognize when you're the one doing it. And you could also say that these two extremes, they represent on the one side an underuse of masculine power and at the other end of the spectrum, an overuse of masculine power. So on the underuse of masculine power end, a man who is in, uh, in quotes, in doormat mode tends to show up hesitant, insecure. He has a hard time speaking up for himself and asking directly for what he wants and needs. He's the cl classic people pleaser an expression that got used a lot at my last men's retreat when men were trying to honestly describe how they behave. You know, I'm just a pleaser. Or um, another expression that got used a lot was a yes man. Or, you know, you, sometimes it's called a soft male or 
a nice guy or a snag, which is short for sensitive new age guy. You know, it has it has a lot of stereotypical labels on this kind of behavior and behaviors that you'll see from, a, you know, a man who's on the doormat end of the spectrum, somebody who's underusing his power are things like, yeah, like I just mentioned, being a yes man, uh, saying sure and Sure, even when you really mean no, I don't want to do that. Somebody wants something from you, you say, yeah, sure, that's fine. And you might turn away and as soon as they're not looking, you see the inside because you're so mad that you just said yes to something you don't really want to say yes to. But you swallow it, you make it work, you just keep saying yes and sure. Uh, another thing you might see is just not displaying any strong emotions Typically, they seem like they're generally okay and fine and kind of happy. And <clears throat> excuse me, a man like that will say, I'm fine to pretty much anything. Or you might see a man who is trying to get what he wants in indirect or underhanded manners, like trying to get, let's say, trying to get quality time or attention by saying something to his partner like, well, you don't care what we do as long as you have your television series. You know, a statement like that, that is, doesn't feel very good to anybody. It doesn't, certainly doesn't feel good on the receiving end or for the man who's delivering it. And really what it means is, I would like to have some time with you. I miss you. I want to connect with you. But a man who is underusing his power like this will very, very rarely ever ask directly for uh, getting something that fulfills one of his needs. Another thing that you'll often see, which is another thing that got brought out at one of my men's retreats was trying to predict what others want and to just give it to them before they even ask. You could say that's a, it's almost like an extreme version of being a people pleaser as you just try to please people even before they know they need or want something. Another thing that's characteristic if you are a lot in this doormat mode is feeling lots of resentment. Lots of resentment because in this space, if you're the one doing this, if you're the man doing this, then you end up not getting what you need. You don't get taken care of. You don't get what you want. You don't get to speak up. And that just automatically leads to loads and loads of resentment and loads of resentful conversations in your mind. And typically that resentment will also spill over into sharp, witty, sarcastic comments that, you know, that have way too much bite to them. Another thing you might experience or see if you're partnered with a man like this is being having a very difficult time just making a decision about stuff being wishy-washy is another word that's often used um you know again that it's kind of like you know if you're trying to figure out what's what do you want to do on a saturday night he might say you know whatever you want is fine yeah, no no anything you want is fine as as opposed to saying i really want to go whatever to this italian restaurant and i really want to see this movie and that's what we're doing um so a lot of wishy-washiness and back and forth um, another example I sometimes give in our workshops when trying to demonstrate this is I, I think of when you were in the doormat mode, you, you move through life with a question mark plastered on your forehead. So it's like so many of your communications are marred by or marked by insecurity and hesitation. And an example I gave at our sex workshop was, you know, when a man like this is trying to initiate sex, it might sound something like, you know, honey, uh, you know, how about, you know, maybe later, you know, you or I could, uh, you know, when the kids are in bed later, you know, it's been kind of a long time since we've done anything. So, you know, maybe, you know, maybe we could find a little time later in the bedroom. Uh, but I mean, it's totally okay if you don't want to. I totally understand. But, you know, it could be kind of fun or something like that. You know, all the while accompanied by a good deal of moving around and fidgeting and eyes looking everywhere other than directly in his partner's eyes words expressing anything other than directly asking for here's what i desire here's what i need so a few more a few more things that are characteristic for a man like this that you might you might relate to if you find yourself uh, in this space which a lot of us do i certainly used to i used to I, maybe i'll just insert that i didn't say that up front but i used to find myself constantly vacillating between these two states it was like i didn't have there was no middle space between being a doormat and being a dick so I would, I would be like a man who was like being a doormat and friendly and accommodating and nice 95% of the time. 
And then at some point, you know, resentment will just build up so hard that I just let somebody have it. You know, I just let it rip on somebody and spill all my unpleasant resentment and anger on somebody. It's like there was no middle ground or there was nothing beyond this. It was either being a doormat and not really not get what I want or being a dick trying to get what I want and then turning a lot of people off in the process. So a lot of men who are in this state end up feeling victimized and you know, having a lot of th thoughts and internal conversations like poor me, woe is me, I never get what I want. Um, as a matter of fact, the, the, the story of I never get what I want anyway is one that will accompany a man in this space all the time pretty much. And then another last thing I'll say as an example, although this is not, to me it's not meant to be an exhaustive list by any means, but is, is always gauging their value as a man on everyone else's mood. So that you might have the sense that when, when people around you are happy, you know, when your wife or partner or husband or somebody around you is happy with you and pleased, or when your kids are happy and they talk to you nicely, that's when you're a successful person. That's when you're worth something. And on the flip side, when they're not happy or they're not doing what you want them to do, then somehow that means that you're not worth very much, that you're somehow doing something wrong entirely. And this, this kind of stance or behavior, it literally, it puts the keys to your power and powerfulness or to your power in someone else's hands. You're basically saying, I need you to be happy and pleased and talk to me nicely and appreciate me and our life or else I'm no good. So in effect, handing your keys over to someone else, which obviously is a terrible setup for disappointment and resentment. Now, on the opposite end of this spectrum that I called the being a dick, to be frank, um, is the, you could say the overuse of masculine power or of just of energy and force. So you, from men like that, you will see stuff like lots of anger, uh, lots of yelling, bossing people around, barking orders, whether it's kids or partners or people at work, um, being really impatient and not allowing space for others' expression, for others' wills, for others' desires and interests, often not having much of an interest in what anybody else around them think. Uh, using too much aggression, manipulation, coercion to get what he wants. Whether it's going a certain place with the family, uh, race, getting sex, whatever it is, there's just too much. It's like there's too much energy, too much force, too much aggression behind it. You'll often see a man like that coming in too hot, like hot in quotes. There's just too much intensity in all his interactions. It's as if he's coming in fighting all the time. It's like coming in fighting no matter what. And actually, there was a man at uh, my last retreat here who said it in a great way. He said, just like you'll notice that I said was characterized for a man who's like in the doormat mode. This man said, you know, I notice I have this, I have this thought that I'm not going to get what I want anyways. So I just come in yelling. I just come in fighting already because I'm already expecting that it's going to be no, that it's not going to work out. So I need to fight to get what I want here. And that is very characteristic of someone who overuses his power or his intensity or his energy. If you are around a man like this, you might often feel, you know, in addition to that, there, there isn't enough room for you, that it's, it can be scary. Like it could be frightening for children or partners or people around them when they come in with a lot of anger. You know, men's it could be true for everybody, but I'm just keeping the conversation to talking about men. Uh, you know, a man's anger can be really big. I don't know if you can, you might be able to relate to, most people can relate when I ask them in person. You know, when think about when you were a kid and your dad or whoever the men in the house were, when they were really, when they got really mad. You know, you remember how you felt that in the whole house, even if you were on opposite ends of your property, everybody knew it when dad was mad. And it's because it's an energy that is big and intense and it can be felt, you know, it can be felt far away. You don't need to even be in front of a man like that to feel it. And of course, you know, all the stories that have come out through the Me Too movement, which 
you know, sadly isn't really surprising if you've been in this line of work or you've heard vulnerably from men or women in pretty much any context, you'll know this was the case. And the, you know, all the stories that have come out through the Me Too movement are displays of overuse or misuse or abuse of masculine power. That's what can be, not always by any stretch of the imagination, but that is something that can happen on that end of the spectrum, overuse of masculine force or just being a dick. <laughs> on a lighter note, I remember I heard I heard this uh, comedian once. I unfortunately I forgot his name, but he was talking about he was talking about all the, the you know the ancient texts of this world, the Old Testament, the New Testament, the Quran, and texts like that. And he's like, yeah, it's basically thousands and thousands of pages, all to say, don't be a dick. <laughs> I said there's some wisdom in that, although perhaps a type bit simplified. Now, interestingly. On both ends of this spectrum, the being a jerk or being a doormat, both men on either end of the spectrum tend to feel they feel bad about themselves and they tend to have a lot of regrets about the things they do or the things they didn't do and how they accomplish what they do accomplish. And both of these types of behavior are fueled by underlying beliefs. And these are things that are like run in the back of the head of these men. Beliefs such as, I'll never get what I want. I can't win. I'm not worthy. I'm not lovable. I'll never be enough. I'm, nobody respects me. I don't get respect. I think I, I might have quoted this on the previous podcast too. You know, I had a man who said, excuse me, who just embodies this in saying, you know, he feels really powerful at work and gets lots of appreciation and respect. But when he goes home, he says, I feel like a second-rate citizen in my own house. So obviously a man who feels like that, for whatever reason, doesn't feel good about himself. And really the both behaviors you see on the doormat end of the spectrum and on the being a dick end of the spectrum, they are attempts to get some, actually some positive natural need met, such as feeling loved or relaxed, or respected, you know, needs that are universal to humankind that we all try to somehow get to in life. So if, if you're a man who knows you're either way too much of a doormat, or you find yourself being a dick, that's your sign that it's time for some serious looking in the mirror and serious time to get support in some way. And my good news here is that there are lots of ways to get support. You can find a local men's circle. I, for example, I've been sitting in a men's circle locally here in my area for uh, 10 or 11 years now. Every week or other week, I get together with a bunch of men who live around here and we help each other. We help each other not be doormats and not be dicks and find another way or, that isn't that. Find a better and more conscious and more open and honest way to be a man and we help each other do that. I do this through the international nonprofit called the Mankind Project, but there are many other organizations that do men's work. There are lots of local churches that have men's groups to them. You can call someone like me, you know, a coach who has experience with working with men and these issues. Or maybe you have a mentor in your, wherever you live, maybe you have a mentor, an older man who has great experience and you lean on him. But definitely find someone or somebody or some organization to hash this out with. So you're not trying to do everything on your own. So a uh, now, a big part of the work to explore our power as men definitely needs to include exploring how we feel in our hearts and how we deal with our love and how we deal with our feelings. It's because it's by being in touch with how we feel and how others feel that we can trust our power to be used for a good purpose, to, you know, to uplift myself and others and to, to be used for protection and for a good purpose. It's, it's because, you know, it's when I, when I, when I am not in touch with how I feel with my heart, as I might say, just as an umbrella term, that's when I don't notice what my behaviors are doing to people around me. If I'm scaring my kids or my partner, you know, it's if, when I'm not in touch with my heart, I'm not paying attention to whether I'm crossing people's boundaries or being way too intense. And it is by opening my own heart and being present to my love and my feelings and hence other people's feelings is how I have a gauge for how I'm doing. 
It's not the only gauge, but it's an important one to notice that if I'm scaring someone or, you know, that I can do something else. You know, this, as a matter of fact, this, this working together of my power and my heart, it's so important. I, I asked, That was the title of my men's retreat. It's power and heart. Now, if you are the partner or family member of a man that you see, you know, your husband or your partner or your brother being too much of a doormat or struggling with being a jerk sometimes, I, I'd encourage you to give, do your best to give him the benefit of the doubt for starters, knowing that his behavior is, it is his own attempt to get love and respect and connection and to feel good. And then, of course, you might need to practice your own version of power and heart by talking directly to him and tell him how you feel when you see this behavior or ask how you might support him. And of course, this this whole conversation we're having here and a conversation you might start, it's just the beginning of a conversation. It's just an opening to a work in progress. As a matter of fact, a work that'll probably go on forever. I mean, that would that is true for me. You know, I've been doing this. I've been doing this kind of work for 15, 16, 17 years now intensely and I've gotten really good at it and I'm not done. It's not over. I'm not just coasting on my laurel, resting on my laurels or coasting down the hill now. It is totally a work in progress and I feel the training that I have gotten deliberately or otherwise is still working in there. The desire, the, you know, the temptation to sometimes just be a nice guy all the time or to get angry about stuff and get way too harsh, those impulses still show up. Just remember, if you find yourself like closing your hearts off, cl closing your heart off, or being too much of a pleaser or too much of a jerk, that's your sign to do something different, to seek out some support, talk to somebody. And a um, reminder here for more practical tips, what you as a man can do to be more in your power in your relationships and what you, if you are the partner of a man, what you can do, those are listed in the uh, episodes called How Men Use or Lose Their Power in Relationship. It's a two-part episode and has lots of practical tips in it. So my advice would be just go observe yourself. My advice is uh, don't be a dick, but also don't be a doormat either. Find a way to be a man that is beyond those two extremes and have more options when you find yourself in difficult situations. Reach out if you need more support. You can always uh, find us on our website, loveworksforyou.com. Feel free to contact me or us. Until then, thanks for listening, and we look very forward to being with you next time. You have been listening to the Dare to Love podcast with Sonica Tinker and Christian Peterson, co-founders of LoveWorks. And hey, if you found this podcast to be valuable, would you hit the share button and go ahead and share this with your friends on Facebook, Twitter, or wherever your favorite hangouts are. Thanks so much for sharing the love.